I want us to go to the Bible in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And if we were to read verses 6 and uh, verses 7. Uh, 1, 2, 3. I have planted, uh -huh. Apollos watered, uh -huh. but God gave the increase. But God gave the increase. God is the superintendent of increase. What that then means is that God oversees, regulates, and brings increase into existence. By revelation, we understand that here, Paul had come to the church in Corinth and he preached the gospel to them. And after Paul, there came a man called Apollos who came and preached to the people. And after Apollos came and preached to the people, there was then now division among the people. Some said, we belong to Paul. And some said, we belong to Apollos. And if you'll have it the way the Bible says it, it puts it this way. It says, and some said, we are of Paul. And some said, we are of who? Apollos. Now, this church, we all know how carnal this church was. It was a spiritual, gifted church, but very immature. And this division then caused Paul to write to them. And here he is putting everything in context. He says, what I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. He says, I have planted. That is Paul. He is now talking to the church. He is talking to the people who are saying, some of us belong to Paul. Some of us belong to Apollos. He then writes to all of them. He puts them in one place. And he says, as for me, Paul, I planted. And as for Apollos, he watered. But increase now came from God. Hallelujah. Paul here, he's telling us that when it comes to increase, we don't think men. We don't talk men. But it is God who gives. Whenever we are talking planting or watering, we are talking men. But whenever we talk increase, we are talking who? God. Because God gives what? Uh, you are a good church. Hallelujah. Amen. So as a teacher of the word, allow me to focus on three words as we go deeper into our series, God of Increase. Hallelujah. Amen. The first word I want to focus on is planted Amen. or planting. Hallelujah. Because Paul says, I have planted. The word planted or the word planting or to plant means to set something in place. So he's saying, I have set something in place. And planting is a work of men. The second word Paul is using is water or watering. That word there talks about nourishing what is set in place. We will rewind a little bit for those who are still not getting it so that they get it. The first word we are talking about or focusing on is planted. And planted talks about what church? To set something in what? In place. 
And planting is a work of who? Of man. Hallelujah. The second word Paul is using is watered or watering. That word there talks about nourishing what is set in place. This is still man's work. Meaning planting is man's work. Watering is still what? Man's work. One man planted and one man watered. And Paul himself here, he says, I, Paul, planted, but Apollos watered. The third word I want to focus on and I take you higher is increase. Hallelujah. Every time we talk increase, or rather the word increase means to grow. Increase means to expand. You can't be a student of the scripture that every Sunday we teach you, even when we are teaching, you don't know the difference between us ministering, teaching, prophesying, and preaching. You don't write notes at all. You know what the Bible then says? The Bible says, if you abide in me and my word in you. You know what is to abide? To abide is to dwell. To dwell is not to visit. The reason why some of the things they don't work for us as believers is because we visit the word of God. We don't dwell in the word of God. And you can't dwell in the word as long as the word has not dwelled in you. And one of the ways for the word to dwell in you is when you do 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. When you study, you know when you're about to write for exam. You have another book here. You have another textbook here. You are taking notes. What are you doing? You are studying. But as long as there are no notes, you are reading. But when you are now studying, you are capturing written words. And as you capture them, you make them part of you. And you expect them to become your reality sooner or later. And then the Bible then says, as a man thinketh in his mind, so is he. But your mind is like an elastic. Once it is stretched, it cannot go back to its original form. So every time the word of God is ministered unto you, don't be a hearer. The book of James says, do not be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. What does that mean? The word doer there, it means be practical practitioners of the word and you can't be a practitioner when you are not skilled in what you are about to practice what the bible then says there or rather what the bible is saying in simpler terms is saying become a specialist when it comes to the word the word must become an area of your specialization let others boost in healing the sick let others boost in casting out devils but when it comes to you, Apostle Miss, be a man of the word. That if we were to take you to a DNA test and we test you there, we'll hear there's some mutation that took place in your DNA. And when we check, we hear now another part says mm, the word. <laughs> the Bible says children no longer born by men's will, but children born of God. And a snake gives birth to a what? Snake. I thought you would say donkey. I was going to laugh out. <laughs> Listen, a, a snake gives birth to a snake. And if the Bible says you are born of God, we then need to understand who is God. In his original form, God is a spirit. But in his deity, God is the word. John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. So if the Bible says you are born of God, it says what? You are born of the word. Hence the Bible says we are not born of the corruptible, but we are born of the incorruptible, which is what? The word of God. So you can't claim to be a child born of the word, yet there is no word in you. There is nothing that impresses God than his word. That's why the Bible says he watches over his word to perform it. Meaning God is never in a business of watching over men. God watches over his word. You want God to protect you. 
You want to be an asset. Don't be the one screaming. Be the carrier of the wood. I, I, am I communicating? One thing I've learned in my work with God is that when it comes to God, God respects value. You see, I don't want to be scholastic here, but when we talk value, we are not talking responsibility. Your responsibility does not equal value. We are all valuable, but we differ in value. <laughs> Let me put it in a way that somebody will understand what Apostle is saying. It is ignorance and stupidity. Uh, in fact, it's wickedness. For you to use the same amount or the same measure of salt you used to cook rice. Both valuable, but differ in what? So you need to know what to use when and how much to use when. So you can't put five cups of rice and you go to salt and say, salt, come here, five cups. <laughs> you will end up with what? Disaster. All valuable, but carries different value. Even us as people, before God, we are valuable. But what determines our value before God is what is on the inside. And in this case, it has nothing to do with gifts of the spirit. In this case, it has everything to do what? With his word. So every time the word is ministered and given unto you, with an open heart, you receive it. And you write certain things down. And especially in new life. Here we don't give you uncooked meal. Here we give you cooked meal. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So the third word I want to focus on is increase. Say with me, increase. So increase, as we all know, means to grow, expand what has been set in place. Glory be to God. He then says, I planted, Apollos watered, but what has been planted, God increased. What has been watered, God increased. What that then tells you and I is that increase is not Paul or Apollo's domain. Increase is a work of God. Are you still with me? Paul is telling you and I that yes, you may work. As a matter of fact, you may work hard to set things in place. As a matter of fact, you can even have people help you put things in place. Remember, he planted Apollos watered. So to plant is to set things in place. And to water is to nourish that which has been set in place. But according to God, increase, according to the word increase comes from who? God. So Paul here is telling you and I that you may work hard. Like we're saying, planting is a work of men. Watering is a work of men. But increase is God's domain. It's in the domain of God. So you may work hard to put something in place. You may even get other people work with you. Or rather help you. But increase does not come from men. Increase comes from God. Increase, according to what he said in verse 7, is God's work. Is what? God's work. Meaning it comes from God. Increase is totally a work of God. The God I serve is a God of increase. You know, sometimes we treat people like increase is their domain. Uh, Jabez prayed a prayer. And the Bible says in verse 10 of chapter 4, in the book of Chronicles. And Jabez prayed a prayer to the God of Israel. And he knew that his mother, of course, gave birth to him in sorrow. And because the mother was in sorrow, 
when she gave birth to him, she named him Jabez. It was not out of happiness. It was out of pain. But Jabez received a revelation that some of us are about to receive today. That changed his entire life. And that revelation was the God you serve is the God of increase. How do I know he received that revelation? Because when you read chapter 4 of that book, you realize that from verses 1, it talks about genealogies or chronology. It says, he who, who, who begat who? Who, who begat who? This one gave birth to this one. This one gave birth to this one. So we see a chain here from this person to that person, but we don't see nothing or anything exceptional about any of them. We just hear who, who gave birth to who. But when it gets to verse 10, it says, but Jabez prayed unto the God of Israel and said, oh God of Israel, increase and enlarge my territory and bless me real good. And the Bible then says, and God haken to the prayers of Jabez and increased him and blessed him. The increase the mother could not give. The increase the forefathers could not give. He asked God for it. And God did not put him on a waiting list. God is a God of increase. And he said, the increase you are trusting me for. Somebody lift up your right hand and say, increase is mine. So he understood, brothers and sisters, that though my mother gave birth to me, she became a doorway for me to come to this realm. She does not have the increase I am trusting God or her for. And then he had to pray to God. And God did not say you can't ask for increase. But because God is a God of increase, he did increase the young man. Uh, without God increasing you, you see, when we talk increase, we are not just talking increase in one area of your life. But when we talk increase, we are talking increase in all areas of your life. Uh, Luke chapter 252 now. Apostle, where, where are you going, Apostle? We might as well as go there. Apostle, where are you going? Let's go. Luke 2 verse 52. Read out loud. One, two, three. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature. Who is increasing or who is being increased here? If Jesus could go through a season of increase in his life, why then are you acting cute when God is telling you this season is your season of increase? Jesus had great work ahead of him. But God had to capacitate him and stretch him for what was coming. By first doing what? Increasing. There are certain aspects of your life that until they are increased, you will not summon the greatness God promised you. I will give an example that will offend other people. So I said it in advance. So that just in case you are offended, just know I said it, it was going to offend you anyway. There are people who are trusting God for a million. Yet their capacity says 10,000. I gave an example one time and I said something. I said, there is a difference between having millions and being a millionaire. You see, being a millionaire is a state of being. But having millions is what you have in your account. Just because you have millions in your account, it does not mean you are a millionaire. 
You are not a millionaire. You have millions. And time will prove to you that you are not a millionaire. You have millions. So when you give one million to a person with a capacity of 10,000, the mind of that person will stop working. And they will misuse their money. They will spend everything. Buy things they don't need. And when they reach 10,000, the mind now starts working. Say, hey, I have money. Why? Because you gave a million to a person who does not have the capacity. Sometimes it's not that you are not appreciative. You are. It's just that you can't handle what has been given. It's like God blessing a man who does not know what is what with a good woman. He will conclude this is difficult. Yet the only thing he was supposed to do was to study and understand their project. And in studying and understanding their project, they were going to cultivate their project. Say, God of increase. God of increase. One more time, say, God of, God of increase. So here we see that Jesus himself increased. What? Why? Because sometimes what you are going to be requires you to be increased. Not only in stature, but in wisdom. Because those who do exploits in the kingdom of God, Daniel says, the people who know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits. Three stages into it. Number one, knowing. Number two, being. Number three, action. Do you guys understand what I just said? So the people who know, number one is information. Knowledge. And he says they are God. Shall be strong. That is now being. You see, the enemy does not care about you knowing. What he fights is becoming. Do you know why people talk bad about you? Even people you helped. Do you really know why they turn their backs and talk down on you? Some of you, you think because you have done something against them. 99% of the times, people talk about you because they want to discredit you from becoming. That's why the first thing they do is they go to everyone who sees you as a good person. So they are not really bad-mouthing you in that sense. They are fighting your becoming. Because your becoming is greater than where you are coming from. I don't know if they are getting it. Apostle, you have a long way to go here. So a double confirmation that something is about to take place is when somebody out of nowhere starts saying nye, 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 about you. When the nye, 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 nye starts, don't be a spiritual sanctified CC. Uh, why are they talking about me, God? What? No! Look at things with the eye of the spirit. It is because your becoming is greater. Uh, David was not a king yet. But Saul had his head marked. Why was he fighting this boy? Yet this boy has not occupied the seat of presidency. Of kingship. It's because he knows once he becomes. It will be too late. So increase is part of you becoming. 
There are certain things, no matter the prayer, no matter the zeal, no matter the hunger, until we are increased in certain areas, we will not attract that which we are trusting God for. Because increase in certain areas will be a qualifier for God to release that which we are trusting. I don't know. So what qualifies you will be increased in certain areas. And Jesus increased in wisdom. Who is Jesus? In new life we know who Jesus is. He is what? Theo Entropos. The word Theo means what? God. And the word Entropos means what? Man. He is God man. But he still increased in wisdom. You, you never thought of increasing in wisdom. You just think life happens. Whatever come, let it come. No wonder why you are attracting wrong things. Because you never enter a season of preparation. You always wait for a season of manifestation. What's wrong with you? Jesus here is in a season of preparation exceptionality does not come by hunger or desire. Comes by the reason of preparation. And Jesus increased in wisdom. And what? And stature. He didn't accidentally move and increase in stature. And in favor. Meaning if we talk increase, even in favor, with God and with men, it means increase when God gives it. He does not give it full. If he has to give you increase, can I have something here, a small, small, small bowl or something? Watch this now. So when God gives favor, he does not give all of it. He gives this. And then God looks at you and says, I've given you favor. But it is ignorance for you to be stuck in that. You have favor, but this favor can take you up to that far. But now, according to God, because God is a God of increase, he expects you to trust him. For what? For increase. Increase of what? Of the favor that already he has given. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, according to the Bible, Jesus had favor with men when he was born. How do I know that? The wise men came and gave gifts. He had favor with God. But that was not enough. That was favor for baby Jesus. But for the Jesus who's now going to speak to multitudes, God had to increase him in favor. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. So it is ignorance for you to say, I have wisdom, that's it. No, we increase in wisdom. The danger is that now a lot of people are stuck in what they used to solve last of last year's problems. And they want to solve problems now using the same wisdom. And that wisdom is not working and you are wondering, how come I used it? It's because that wisdom was for them. But for this, what God is about to do, you need to increase in that area. You see, increase determines also who you are going to attract in your life. Some of you, you can use who surrounds you as a measuring stick of your value now. You, you attract no one of value. Even the people that attract you. Say, ah, maybe because I grew up in Amaskran. No, it has nothing to do with Amaskran. When God increases you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Somebody in the island of Tubaktu will find their way to you. Not because they were really looking for you, but increase in you will summon them. That's why Jesus had to grow and increase in stature, in wisdom, in favor with men, and with favor with God. Notice if you may, it was not just increase 
with God. But also it was increased with men. It was favor with what? Men. Not just favor with God only, but favor with God and men. Meaning he increased the way men looked at him. It was no longer the same. The level of love he received from them, it was no longer the same. First Corinthians, please. Three, yes. I have what? Let's read one, two, three. I have what? I have planted uh -huh. Apollo's water, uh -huh. but God gave the increase. What is the Bible in a nutshell teaching us here? And what is it that God wants us to focus on in this very season and on this very series we are dealing with? God wants us to know that we plant. Others may help us to water. But increase is always from God. Hallelujah. The reason why increase is always, if you hear what I just said, the reason why increase is always from God, not increase is from God, but always, there is always. The reason why increase is always from God is because even that which we plant is from God. Are you hearing me? The seed we plant is from God. The harvest, God himself is the one that brings what? Increase. Say, I hear you, Apostle. Second uh, Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. Because somebody's like, eh? What is he saying? I will repeat that. The reason why increase is always from God is because even what we plant is from God. Meaning, if God does not give it to you, you, have, you will have nothing to plant. So you can't boost and say, it is my own strength. That strength you have came from God. Okay. What does uh, the Bible then says? New King James. Uh -huh. One, two, three. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower. So who supplies the seed to the sower? God. So God is the one that gives seed to the one who plants. Let's go. Uh huh. And bread for food. Uh huh. Supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. My goodness. Hallelujah. With power, say, increase is mine. I know some of you men promised you a lot of things. It is okay, but I want you to trust not in them for increase. They can plant, they can water. But the increase you are looking for will not come from them. The increase you are looking for in your business, in your marriage, in your career, in your children's life. Listen, in your every area of your life, in your academics, the increase will come from God. And that on its own, brothers and sisters, should tell you something. Please be seated. That should tell you something. God is the lifter of men. Uh, let, me say to, let me say that to people who understand what Apostle is talking about. If the Bible is saying God is the one that brings increase, it then should then tell you that God is the lifter of men. Because if God is the one that brings increase, it does not matter who does not support your rising. It does not matter who does not support your going up. It does not matter who does not support your growing and your expansion. When God comes into the picture, is into. One thing about the revelation I'm giving you, is that it will force you not to settle. God is never in a business of lifting people who have settled. Once you know that God is a God of increase, what then comes into your spirit is there is more into it than what I am currently seeing. There is more into it than what I am occupying. There is more into it than what I am experiencing. There is more into it than where I am right now. 
because God is a God of increase. It can always be better than this. It can always be bigger than this. It can always be greater than this because God is a God of increase. And once you know that God is a God of increase, you want to have a better last year. Okay, let me say that again. Once you know that God is a God of increase, you want to have a better last year, a better last of last year. No, 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 no. When God becomes the God of increase, you always look ahead. And when they say, what's happening to you? You say, the best is yet to come. We thought last year was your best year. That was my best year yet. But my best is yet. I want to give everybody a formula. We call it spiritual vocab, vocabulary, language of the spirit. That does not focus on what you have now. Focuses on the promises of God, meaning on the word of God. The Bible says the promises of God are yea. Some of you, you read your Bible. The Bible says the promises of God are yes and uh, yes and Amen. those are the promises of who? Of God. Meaning the promises of God are guaranteed. Glory be to God. And if you stand on the word, and I told you last week that standing on the word means to stand on his promises. Praise the Lord everybody. Once you stand on the word, standing on his promises, you then know his promises are yes and so if somebody comes to you and say, Sister Sandra, are you married? You then say no. Why? Because his promises are yea and amen. Glory be to God. Maybe some of you, you just landed here in your life. Let me help you understand what a promise is. A promise is a reality that has not taken place. When, when I was about to marry the beautiful charisma, I, I thank God, listen, I thank God that you guys noticed and heard the beautiful part. I mean, we can't keep pretending like it's not there. I gave her a promise ring. The moment she left my presence, she left my presence with a reality that has not taken place. If you don't know me well, now you, if you didn't know me by then, now you know me. I was broke. I was broke like Moses when he broke the Ten Commandments. <laughs> now, she had a promise ring from this broke fellow. Because of the promise, it did not matter who stopped next to her with a Lambo. <laughs> or with a Mercedes Benz. The moment she hears, pee, 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 hello sister, she did not have to talk too much. She had to just say, I'm off the market. What is making the beautiful charisma to behave like that is not that she is married. She is promised. But the promise has taken her to a reality that has not taken place. That she's rejecting even other opportunities. Because according to her, it is just a matter of... I'm not sure if some people are getting it right here. So the Bible says the promises of God are yes and... Meaning whatever God said, it shall come to... Please be seated. You are getting me nervous. You are, you are so much active and alive in this branch. 
So if now somebody comes and says, Sister Sandra, are you married? Sister Sarah has received the spiritual vocabulary. She can't say no. Because she understands that the moment she says no, she disqualifies her marriage in the spirit. So the answer that Sister Sandra is supposed to give is not yet. Meaning I don't have now, but it's coming. So not yet means I don't have it now, but it's on the way. I feel it in my spirit. Are you a millionaire? I feel it in my spirit. I said I feel it in my spirit. In Christ Jesus, great is what you are. In Christ Jesus. And why is that? Because you are a seed of Abraham. Therefore, you have no choice. Inside of you, you are wired for greatness. But how you grow up and the environment that ministers to you will then determine if you are going to pursue that or not. Because the inspiration and the information you surround yourself with either destroys your greatness or enhances your greatness. There is no middle ground to it. Please be seated. Please be seated. In Genesis chapter 12, since I mentioned Abraham anyway, I might as well as go there. In Genesis chapter 12, God wants to make somebody a father of many nations. He does not pick someone who already has children. God calls Abraham, who is the opposite of what God is promising. He wants somebody, pastor, to be a father of many nations. But he does not pick somebody who already has what? Children. But he picks Abraham, who is completely the opposite of what he is promising. Ayah. When God steps in the equation, when the big man upstairs steps in the equation, even those who despise you, even those who have been cursing you, will bless you. Will bless you. I'm telling you, they will bless you. They will say, first of all, we did not understand, but now we understand. No! The big man has stepped in the equation. When I looked at your content, I could not really understand what you were saying, but now I understand. No! God is in the equation. I always thought you were a very rude person. <laughs> How do you think I'm a rude person if you don't know me personally? It's just that when it increase heat, even people who look down on you, even people who questioned your rising, will find themselves supporting that anybody who fights you, they'll be the first one to say, not that one. He says, Abraham, come out. Why? God in this context wants us to know that being alone does not hinder him from doing what he said he's going to do. Hallelujah. Being alone is not a hindrance to his calling. Being weak is not a hindrance to his calling. Being old is not a hindrance to his calling. And even being broke is not a hindrance to his calling. Hallelujah. Being childless is not a hindrance to his calling. Glory be to God. After all, he does not call the qualified. But he qualifies the ones he calls. God knows where you are before he calls you. He even knows your condition before he calls you. So that's not a problem for him. It might be a problem to you. But that's not a problem to him. He said, Moses, you are going to be the greatest prophet. Go and tell Pharaoh, say, hey, I have a stammering tongue, stammering lips. I said, eh? I created those lips. 
do you think I did not know when I was calling you that you have stammering lips? Hallelujah. You know, God has a tendency of showing up and showing off. <laughs> Whenever you feel like the world is against you, just know he's about to show up and he's about to show off. He has that tendency where the last becomes the first. The tail becomes the head. The rejected becomes the accepted. The tolerated becomes the celebrated. So God does not look at your condition. God does not look at your financial background. When he is introduced in the equation, increase is yours. I believe it's in the book of Matthew chapter 14, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm correct. The Bible then says, and they brought five baskets of loaves, or five loaves, sorry, in a basket. And they brought two fish. And the Bible says, and when it was in the hands of Jesus, he gave thanks. As long as the bread was by somebody, as long as the fish was with somebody, the fish and the bread remained the same. But when it was taken to the hands of God, God introduced in the equation, there was increase. Increase comes from God. Thank you for watching. We trust you were blessed by the teaching of the highly esteemed Apostle Ms. Mitswake Tancredi. For more of these teachings, click on subscribe and turn on the notification icon so you don't miss any of our uploads.